got a whole bunch of round parts to do today so I'm going to be doing them on a positioner first I've got to do a little bit of prep work they've got a little bit of a mill a mill scale type coating on them it's as a light coating it's not nearly as thick a mill scale as you would see on one inch hot rolled plate or anything like that but it's still not going to be good for TIG welding so previously I did a run of these over a year ago and I even did a video or two on them called gravy TIG welding because it is gravy work and the previous batch were nice cold rolled finish but these have a little a little bit of a mill scale and that's got to be removed so I'm going to hit it with a little flapper wheel here I'm going to be welding these with uh, an AHP Alpha TIG 200X machine and I'm pushing it pretty hard and pushing the torch pretty hard too because I'm up close to the max amperage and way over the duty cycle for the torch I'm using the torch switch uh, and I'm going to tack these up especially it's going to be handy using the torch switch and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put the electrode pretty much flush with the tip not sticking out at all and that's a pretty that's a pretty small cup it's a number four or five cup there and I can just prop it right on where I want the tack you know and hit the button and bam I got a nice little fusion tack and of course I'm up high amperage I'm up at almost 200 amps to do this with I'll turn it down a little bit for welding here I'm doing the same thing but I had to extend the electrode out just a little bit maybe uh, 3 16 of an inch just uh, for I've got about an eighth of an inch space where I can't possibly contaminate it uh, and then I can get through all these with one electrode just by hitting that switch not worrying about a foot pedal so they're all tacked now and I'm gonna weld them on a positioner now, I bought this thing probably I don't know back in 1996 in that time frame ordered it off eBay and I've actually got a lathe set up with an, a tail stock and a torch uh, holder a, with a pneumatic actuator and everything and I'll show that in a video pretty soon doing these same parts but using different machine with a water-cooled torch and all that but this one I'm just using the positioner and I'm walking the cup on the flange part and then I'm going to just try to prop lightly with a TIG finger on the other joint and we'll see how this goes so I'm up around pretty hot up around 180 amps or so here 330 second 2.4 millimeter electrode and I'm using a 1 8 rod 3.2 millimeter rod and 180 amps is pretty warm and my torch is getting really warm that's why I switched over for a future video I'm going to be using a water-cooled torch but when you're walking the cup like this basically you're just wiggling it and you're trying to put sort of light pressure you don't want to have a death grip on the torch and you don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on the part because you can slip off and then kind of you know leave a trail of arc marks if you do so that one's done and walking the cup gives you quite a bit of uniformity but it's not always allowed and here's why a little close-up here will show these little scratches that the ceramic cup leaves and those aren't always allowed on parts if you've got a nice nice finish on a part the uh, machine to finish you know the, the acceptance criteria just might not allow that so I'm, I'm going now to pulse and really all I got to do is switch this uh, little switch here to go to pulse and I'm using one pulse a second 50% on time 50% background current and the reason is twofold I want to leave a nice evenly spaced ripple just for co cosmetic reasons and the other reason is with pulsing just with a little background current uh, it's very easy to lay wire and not have the rod ever ball up and come out of the puddle I right, watch this pay attention to this in a minute and I'll talk about see the sparks there you shouldn't get that with take welding and what the, the reason I did get it is because I didn't tap the switch and get a pre-purge going that's what pre-flow is for so that you have argon at the arc when the arc establishes if you don't you get just a momentary just a momentary brief moment of contamination doesn't always deposit itself onto the metal or in the weld but you know you get some sparks like that arcs like argon even for that brief moment it'll make your tungsten not last as long it'll make the tip kind of fuzz up a little bit so here I'm doing that one pulse a second with 50% background and I'm just holding it by hand just lightly propping with the TIG finger and you see you can see I'm, I'm a little bit shaky moving the torch around here and there but it's it's coming out okay even if I change the arc length a little bit or move a little bit it, it all comes out okay in the end you can see that is smoking hot but my finger is not so you see where there's a little bit of variance on the width there and everything that'll cure itself when I hook this thing up to the welding lathe I got a whole bunch more of these to do so in a future video I will show this little setup here with the torch 
holder with the actuator and come down and it does a much nicer job and really kind of just easy peasy see how much more uniform that weld is than the one where I was propping by hand